Louisiana Beer Reviews. Here we are at 9, <laughs> yeah, I thought it was 9.15 a.m. And we're looking at Harpoon's Flannel Friday. Hoppy Malty Crisp Amber Ale. 5.7% alcohol, 35 international bitterness units. The ingredients are, well, they don't say on the website. <laughs> Apparently water, barley, malt, hops, and yeast. I noticed that there are some video reviews. Uh, I was surprised at New England Beer Reviews. Jeff Lyons had not reviewed it yet. And it's no longer produced. It came out in 2016. It may come back for 2017. Unfortunately, it says enjoy by the 17th hour, 43rd minute of December 15, 2016. It does have the date, guys, but this is far out of date. It's my fault for not checking at Rouse's when I bought this on the shelf, you know. Um, on the other hand, you would think a store could check their dates, but believe me, they're not going to do that. Established 1986, so this company's 31 years old. It's from Vermont, Windsor, Vermont, and uh, I think uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Yep. I've been to Boston a few times, been to the Red Sox game, been to a Red Sox game twice. Okay, oh whoa, this is not exactly the right glass. That is a, like a yellowish white head, like old paper that got yellowed. Okay, so yellowed paper, white. Uh, it's uh, an amber-orange appearance with some bubble streams. It's pretty clear. Um, I'm going to be fair with it. I mean, it's old, right? So it's showing brown leaves, a dog with a, some kind of toy in its mouth. You're playing outside. The cool air is coming in. We've got some cool air today here in May. Winter does not want to leave us in Louisiana. Sort of a greenish brown bottle in a way, kind of Euro brown. If you ever notice those European brown bottles have a green tint. If you ever get uh, like a Bex Dark, which is now American brown, it might be different. Um, they, used to, they used to make St. Pauli Girl Dark, but that's gone. Um, Heineken Dark might ha used to have that kind of greenish brown bottle. I think they've gone more to a standard brown. I don't even know if that beer is still made. It seemed like it just disappeared in the last six to seven months. Heineken Dark. <clears throat> this doesn't smell old. I mean, you get an old beer that's stale, it'll smell stale and old, okay? If you want to be techno. Oh, it's uh, like. Uh, Amber ale, like a car caramel, 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 caramel type thing. Some tea leaves, a little bit. Some sweetness, sweet white, brown, the sweet white bread crust, but the crust is brown, right? So white bread crust, crust, crust. This is very similar. This is an ale, so it's going to have a softer body and everything, but it's similar to the very lamented and departed, it may still be lingering on the shelves, but if you look at the dates, they're old. The copper lager, the Bush Signature Copper Lager. What a shame. What a fabulous beer from Bush. But then, I mean, why promote a brand? People might buy it, right? <sighs> this is a nice smell, and it's a little fruit lemon type thing. It doesn't have that, but just. It's reminding me of that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Nice lacing, glass lacing. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, let's go with the flavor. Still has that lemon. A little caramel nougat, like a really muted old musk three old musket musketeer three musketeers bar. The tannins a little bit, 
some roasted malt, light, light to medium roasted malts. Moderate, low to moderate bitterness, pleasant bitterness, appropriate for this winter ale. You know, it kind of reminds me of Sierra Nevada Tumblr. You seeing Tumblr? I'll never see Tumblr. You might get Tumblr in the, the variety pack. And I haven't done a video review for it. I've done written reviews. I never seem to get to do a video review. I like Tumblr. I like this. I think this can rival Tumblr. It's clean. Clean beer. Clean. Crisp, easy going finish. Enjoyable all around. Wow, this company, you know, people will say some things about it, like... Oh, it's on par with a Beta or Shipyard. I guess you could say Bells. Shiner. Red Hook, Widmer Brothers. Type craft beer company, right? You know what I mean? Like... They're been, they've been around a long time, and they're not as, oh, a magic hat, I guess you could say. No sediment. Not as uh, well-respected, or their beers are more like mass appeal type things. But that's not, or people might say kind of dull, ho-hum. That is not necessarily a bad thing, you know, because... A lot of people drink beer and a lot of people like craft beer. A lot of people don't like the real intense, harsh, um, deep, deep speculative flavors. Maybe a lot of people are just satisfied to be a Blue Lodge member. You know, everybody is not trying to get to the top of the pyramid and become a master beer reviewer, a beer drinker, a beer experiencer. They're just satisfied with these sort of like mass appeal craft beers. <clears throat> yeah, it has a um, hmm, citrusy hop thing. I'd be curious to see what the ingredients are, honestly. And there's some nice glass lacing. It's pretty heavy. I think this is an all-around dynamite beer. Um, I don't care who makes it. You say, oh, Harpoon. Oh, well, too bad. I like it. I like their stuff. I am usually, and I'm usually happy with shipyard stuff, honestly. Um, they make really nice beers. I mean, I like most of Abita's beers. Are they super intense? No, but everything do not have to be super intense. <laughs> yeah, this, for what it is, I'm going to say. Oh, and you know, R Beer Advocate says it's very good, a B plus. Rape Beer, they say it's a 58 out of 100. They frankly hate it. They're saying this is a bad beer. But in the style... Amber Ale, it's a, a B, good, 85 out of 100. So, you know, that's a weird rating site. Um, that means they don't like the style, which is totally unfair. I'm going to say A-. minus. If it was super fresh, it really might be an A. I like that citrusy aspect. It's so, you know, it's so different than a lot of other amber ales, but it's, I like amber ales, they're, um, they certainly have their place. Here's an old amber ale, a Budweiser American ale, yeah, you know, they ran commercials for what, three and a half weeks? It didn't quite catch on right off the bat, so you never heard of, you never heard about it again, right? They had some cans, I never did see the cans, and these really beautiful bottles. Then the new owners took over and Carlos Brito was like, let me see the sales sheet, okay, bye. <laughs> 
You dead. You are dead. The bottom line is what he looks at, and so <laughs> this is a, another one that's still produced, but try to find it. Coors Winterfest Ale. I found it once in the winter of 1996-97. I've been looking for it ever since, right? This glitter label. Yeah. Another amber ale for wintertime. Oh, what a good beer. Oh, I drank the whole six-pack. Oh, no one else cared when I went to the Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners, I said, let's, oh, y'all can experience an amber ale. And they were like, hey, screw off, we drink real beer like Coors Light. I was like, okay. But I mean, you know, I can understand Coors is the approach from Coors, Molson Coors. Why sell a really good beer? You know, people might drink it. You know, why make it available? Why make your best adjunct lager available, you know, Coors Extra Gold, Extra Gold Lager. Why would you want to sell something that's your best product and market it? Why would Miller want to, you know, which is Molson Coors, why would they want to push Red Dog? You say, yeah, but that's made with a variety of malts and five different hot varieties. It's more complex than most Miller products. Yeah, so I mean, why push, why push it? I mean, what do you, you might get a good reputation, um, people might enjoy it, it might sell well, it might undermine Miller High Life. Now, now we're getting to the nitty gritty. Coors Extra Gold might undermine. Uh, Coors Bang, Coors Bang. Okay, so, right. See what I mean? Gotta watch it. If you're putting out Coors Banquet, if you're putting out Miller High Life, if you're putting out Budweiser, you gotta watch it. You can't you can't let these uh like more superior more superior beer uh, exist. That's the dirty little secret. All right, so lazy. <laughs> All right, lazy les bon temps relay. Delightful, a delight, a delight, a beer drinking delight. Excellent. I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all come on down to Baton Rouge and go to a Southern University baseball game. I've been to many. Been to some great games too there. Great games.